Daddy, you go crazy. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. Katie Wilson, Fifty Shades of K. I mean, whatever you want to call me, just don't call me with that boy. What's up? <laughs> Katie, what you want, guy? Same old, same old, getting high, getting bad. What you want, university? Well, welcome to DJ UTV. It's a blessing to have you here. Thank you. This interview is sponsored by the Beer Boss, so shout out to them. They uh, helped me keep my, my beer together. Okay, I see okay. it's, it's come, yeah, coming right, through. All right, you see it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> How you been doing, Katie? I've been doing good. I'm blessed. I can't complain. No complaints. Blessed by the best. Mm hmm Well, it's been a while, um, so I'm definitely happy to see you. Yeah, it's been like five years. It's been that long. It's been five years, Damn. university. Really? Yeah, it's <laughs> one on, like, for like four, maybe. Four, <laughs> like, 2000. Damn, maybe. 18, up. 19? Yeah. It's been that long, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's catch up. Well, 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 <laughs> let's, um, let's get to know you, you know, for the, for the viewer's sake. Uh, what side of Chicago are you from? Southside, Hunnets, Roseland, all day. So you from the Hunnets? Wild Hunnets. Wild, wild. <laughs> yes. Okay. Tell us what it was like growing up in Roseland. Roseland was just like one big amusement park for me, honestly. I feel like <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted to grow up nowhere else, like not on the west side, not on the east side, not on the north side, no no shade, no shade, no tea. I'm just saying like south side, the hundreds, that's just, it's home. So yeah, I, yeah. I had a time. <laughs> what, 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 what makes the hundreds so special? Um, I guess it's pretty much my perspective. Cause if you ask another one, like what it's like growing up in the hundreds, they probably won't be that like optimistic about it. But my perspective, I mean, it wasn't all, you know what I'm saying? Cookies and ice cream and shit like that. Niggas was getting dropped and shit like that and all type of shit, running from bullets and shit like that. But I feel like when you grew up around that shit, it become the norm. So that was my normal. So that's like, I don't know. Was you, was, you, was you outside thugging with your, with no. your brothers? No, I wasn't outside thugging with my rounds. <laughs> I wasn't in the streets. I just was in that environment. So it's like, if you in that environment, you're going to be around all that type of shit. But I wasn't never one of those, mm -hmm. you know, real hood bitches just is out here, you know what I'm saying, selling drugs and gang banging. And nah, yeah. I was just, I was, I was in the streets, but like running the streets in my own way. Like, you know, I'm a teenager. I'm out here. I'm, you know, but not like in the, in the streets. Like, not. Okay. Nah, 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 nah. So what would you <laughs> describe as running the streets in your own way? Just, I mean, I guess like growing up too fast in a way. I did grow up too fast, but not like in a, I'm, I want to be fast and grow up too fast type way, but just because I've always been in survival mode. So if you're a kid and you're in survival mode, that kind of take away the kid aspect a little bit because it's like, shit, I got I to gotta, I gotta live. I got to survive. So in that, in that type of sense. So what were some challenges that you had to face when you were growing up here in Chicago? Um, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary is like most of my other peers, just like poverty. That was the main thing. Poverty, not having a father, like not having a stable household, not having a stable upbringing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so how did those challenges mold you into the young lady you are today? Um, I feel like a lot of my character come from a lot of my struggles and like the shit that I've been through. So like, that's why I get my charisma in a way. Like I have like a very like bubbly, like high energy, but it's cause I've been through a lot of shit. So it's like you, if you can go real low, you can go real high. So I feel like my ability to go real high is because I done been in the trenches before. Like I know what it feel like to be real low. And so I think that's kind of like why I chose the comedy route. Well, should I say why the comedy route chose me? Because I feel like I have a calling on my life to like, you know, just make people happy, make people laugh. Mm. So I do that. That's what's up. So as far as comedy is concerned, when did you know that you were funny? Like you knew it yourself. Like I'm funny, people like me, and you know, this is something that I could be doing. Um, I kind of always knew I was funny to myself. I feel like everybody feel like they funny to themselves. Like everybody can make themselves laugh because everybody know their own sense of humor. But like being funny to yourself is one thing and then being funny to other people is another thing. So I kind of always knew I was funny to myself, but I knew that I was funny to other people when I started going, like the first time I went viral, which was in 2017. 
yeah. That's when I was like, okay, y'all, y'all think I'm funny too? Okay, cool. <laughs> Cause I never really tried to be. That's the thing about I, I don't really try to be funny. I just be authentically me. And it's like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But people like it. So <laughs> nowadays, um, as far as being uh, as far as being funny is concerned, um, you got content creators online, and you also have stand-up comedians, and you have experience in both. Uh, can you tell us uh, the differences between the two? Yes, yes. I'm glad you said that because when I first started doing stand-up, you was around when I first started doing That's stand-up. Correct. correct, right? So when I first started doing stand-up, uh, it was because of Dion Mojo. Shout out to Mojo Brooks. <laughs> because when I first started going viral on the internet, like a lot of people started reaching out to me and were trying to get me to do shows, but I wasn't really trying to take my comedy serious at the time because I was still working. I was still working a job. I was a manager at a hotel, and I had just got that promotion. I had just got my salary. I'm like, I'm trying to move up in the world over here at this hotel. Like, and the comedy wasn't really bringing in no, like, no real money for me at the time. So it was like, once again, I was in survival mode. Like, if I'm in survival mode, I'm always going with the money at. So I wasn't really trying to go, like, dive deep into the comedy world because I wasn't trying to let go of my job, and I knew I couldn't do both. And I was doing both at like one point in time. I, I was doing both. I was working a job full time and I was doing shows. Like I would work a 16 hour shift, clock out, go drive to Detroit, do a show, go back, be back at work. But I was feeling like I could handle my talent on crack or some shit. Like I couldn't live that double life. Like it was just too much. So mm -hmm. I had to let the job go. And once I let the job go, Dion hit me up and was like, come on, like you got to get on the stage. And he was like, really pressing the issue to me like that to be a real comedian you got to hit that stage and like i ain't know like the diversity between like online comedians and like stand up real life comedians until like i got into that stand up comedy real life world and i'm like okay like okay okay i see what the division is because like a lot of online comedians they cannot do stand up and this is no tea no shade cuz i struggled with stand up for a long time so i ain't saying like i'm the best stand up bitch either but Facts is facts, they cannot do stand-up. And so a lot of like stand-up comedians look at them like you ain't even like you are off-brand comedian. You ain't even one of us for real. Like you can't even get on the stage. And I feel like maybe some online comedians feel like stand-up comedians, like you can't make a skit and go viral. Like you does that mean you ain't no online, you know, so right. but I I just consider myself just an entertainer. I don't really fuck with labels. I don't care for labels. I'm not a stand-up comedian, I'm not an online comedian, I'm just an entertainer. You put me on a camera, you put me on the stage, I'm gonna I'm do my thing either way, so. Which do you prefer as a comedian? Uh, like, like if you could have it your way, you know, what would you be doing? That's what I'm asking. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> if I could have it my, I think I got, I got love for both of them. Honestly, I got love for both of them, but I prefer, I prefer online comedy better just because I have more like creative control. Like I could stop and take different takes and like create different shit as opposed to like you just gotta be on stage. But the thing that I love about like being on stage is like you get a half from that shit. I never knew that until I did it. Like mm -hmm. you get like that shit like a drug. Like mm -hmm. when I would be up there, that shit would feel like, like my adrenaline would be rushing, like it feel real good. And like you get a lot of love, so it's cool. But I got real bad anxiety, so that's okay. like a a hurdle for me when it comes to stand up. But So you used to be like nervous on the stage? <laughs> yes, I would be backstage from the piss on myself <laughs> but then once I would get on stage you wouldn't even notice like you wouldn't even be able to tell but it's just that that before like that get me but yeah yeah I used to love watching you on stage because <laughs> knowing that you was nervous it's like once you hit the stage you was like I right, I'm up here now I might as well do what I came to do and you know your energy will fill up the room you know what I'm saying um and I knew it was a challenge for you because you had just began doing it but it's just like anything, you know, the more you do it, yeah. practice makes perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you iron out those wrinkles, you know, you practice those jokes and you just become better. So I hope you ain't gave up on doing Definitely stand -up. not. I haven't did I haven't did stand up in a long time, like <laughs> years. I ain't did stand up since like 2019 maybe. Um, but I'm definitely gonna get back at it. I'm gonna get back at it. Cause it's some I feel like my anxiety like is a little bit better under control it's like a little bit more under control now than I was back then I smoke now I wasn't getting high back then mm -hmm. I used to be doing that shit fully sober because I couldn't drink before I went on stage and I wasn't smoking so I'm just up there sober I 
could not get on no stage sober today at this time. I could not do it. <laughs> but I think that would help me though. Like it would it would help calm my nerves. So I feel like I'd be a different type of animal on on, on the stage now. Cause I done evolved. So would you create a content online? Can you um kind of give us a little insight on your process as far as uh creating a video, uploading and stuff like that? Like how much time it takes, you know what I'm saying? So my process sometimes is like not structured, it's like kind of all over the place. Um, I get like a lot of my like content ideas from the ancestors, I say from like spirits. So I just be sitting down there like the idea just come to me. Um, I get a lot of my content ideas from like just everyday life. Like I'll be sitting here having a conversation with you, you will say some shit that'll probably be funny and I think in my head like just from one sentence you said I could make a whole video out of that and like my wheels will get to turning. Um, so that's pretty much how my creative process works. As far as like the time limit goes, I'm pre I, I like to say I'm pretty fast. I like to say I'm pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, like certain videos might take longer than others. Like I got certain videos that I do, like I do a video where I like depict the different countries. So I'll be like changing my outfit seven, eight, nine, ten different times, changing my wig ten different times, like being the different characters and stuff like that. So stuff like that will take like a little bit longer, maybe like two, three hours. Mm -hmm. But yeah. For one video, mm -hmm. or one reel, right? Because you make a lot of reels. How long do your videos usually be? Um, if it's a reel, it's gonna be like real time, so like less than a minute and thirty seconds. Right. But uh, typically like two, three minutes. That's like my cap. Two, three right. Minutes. So it took two, three hours to make a two, two three, three minute, minute yep. video. Yeah. I'm just trying to break it down for the viewers. Yeah. And um. <laughs> You know, because a lot of people don't know that this is really some work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it takes a lot of work. It's tiring. Like, when I get done with those type of videos, I'll be, so, be, like, editing it, like, exhausted. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it do take a lot of work. Yeah. Tell us some pros and cons of uh, a comedian lifestyle. Mm, I do think a lot I, of people be, look, be um, like, recognize you out in public? Yeah, I think, it, I think that question, though, just depends on who you're asking. But for me personally, <laughs> some of the some of the cons, um, like you said, well, I wouldn't consider that no con. I wouldn't consider that no con. I mean, that's a pro and a con. Like people recognizing you can be a pro and it can be a con. Have yeah. it just depends on how you're looking at it. Um, sometimes it do feel like a con though. Like if I'm like um, emotionally drained or like I got like I get sensory overload. So sometimes if my senses is overloaded. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want nobody in my face. Like, I can't even really focus. Like, I'm, like, not even all the way here. And it be sometimes when, like, my senses be, like, hella overloaded. That's when people just be wanting to flood me. Oh, can I take a picture? Hey, da, da, da. But I try not to, yeah, I try not to get, uh, I try not to get, like, irritated with it, though, because it's, like, they don't know that I'm having a rough day. They just, you know what I'm saying, trying to show love right, and take a picture. Right, so right. you look at it from that aspect, that's a pro because people like they sh I get I get loved everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what side of town I'm on, people no matter what love. town I'm in, I get love. So that's definitely um a pro. But I feel like you you gonna get you gonna get what you whatever you give is what you're gonna get back. Mm -hmm. So I always give like love and like, you know, genuine support. So that's what I get I get back. You ever had any like like you ever experienced like any weird shit from any like men in the industry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we'll be here talking all day, uh, so I get into that. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like that's gonna be in, in, in every industry. There's gonna be weird men. You know, yeah. it's not just you know inclusive to this industry. But yeah, weird men are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with it? I don't. I don't. I just stay away from weird men. So, you know, people will try to label you as like, oh, you know, <laughs> like she a diva or like she don't want to work with nobody. Cause you'll hear that say that about like even like female rappers, like, you know, if she ain't like dealing with the weird shit, it's like, oh, she be like to herself, like she don't really, that's me. I be to myself. I don't really, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's good. You know? <laughs> You you definitely stay drama drama free. I do, I do, I do. You know how I do that? I mind, I just mind my business. Like people be like making it seem like it's hard to just mind their business. Like I just stay in my business and I stay in my lane and I mind my business and I use my discernment. Like I don't I don't fuck with everybody. Like so, yeah. That's how that's how I stay drama free. I just mind my business. <laughs> Who are some um, comedians that you look up to? Uh, Martin Lawrence, Bernie Mac, 
like my favorites. Um, who else? Monique, obviously, obviously. <laughs> uh, I love Eddie Murphy too. Um, Dick Gregory. Yeah. Now, what made you put um, emphasis on the obviously with Monique? Obviously with Monique, cause I mean it's Monique. Like you cannot. T I'm talking as far as like female comedy go. You cannot. You cannot talk about female comedy without talking about Monique. Like I love Monique. Yeah. Yeah. She the goat. And Mon Monique don't take no shit. That's what I love about Monique too. She don't take no shit. And so I feel like we need more women like that. Like we need to see representation of like women, black women, who not gonna take no shit from nobody. So yeah, I feel like Monique the icon. For sure. I agree. <laughs> you definitely give young Monique vibes. Thank you. She told me that. She told me that, that yeah. I, I remind her of herself. Yeah. And Monique is great at stand-up. She does TV shows, movies. You, you, you went to acting? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's my end goal. Well, not my end goal. I don't really have no end goal, but that's like one of my big goals is to get into acting. Yeah. Okay. What, what are some future goals or aspirations? You wouldn't mind sharing with us? Mm, I pretty much just want to do like everything I can do like in this human vessel before I got to leave this bitch. So whatever I can do, whatever I can accomplish, I want to do it. So like as far as music, because I do music as well, oh. I'm about to drop a mixtape. <laughs> a lot of people don't know Hold I do on. music. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, okay. I do. I, I, I make music. I rap. Mm -hmm. That's a call me off guard. Go ahead. Yeah, see, you never know what I'm gonna bust out. Mm -hmm. That's not to know with. So music, um, comedy, of course. Um, I'm a published author too, so I want to write more books. Um, I came out with a book called No Love in the Game. It's on Amazon. Go check that out. Uh, what else I done did? I got a movie coming out. It's called The County. Uh huh. That'll be coming out next month. What else I done did? <laughs> Just whatever I can do, like the cake collect. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do so much that I be forgetting. So I just came out with a fragrance. It's called Cream by K, and then I also have a clothing line called the Clay, the K Collection, which I'm wearing now. Ooh. Yeah, so just a lot, just a lot. I got a lot of different talents, and I don't want to let none of my talents go unused. Like I feel like that's a, that's a not a curse, but like. A sin, I was just about to say a sin, I didn't want to say like that harsh of a word, but I feel like if you conscious of like what the f God done gave you, like you know what you working with and you just sit on that shit, you gonna have to answer to this ass when it's time to go. And I ain't trying to be like, oh, I just, I knew you gave me all those gifts, but I only used a couple of them. Now I'm finna max my shit out. So yeah, just everything, everything under the sun. That's what's up. So you're a woman of many different talents, many different ideas. Jane of all trades, yes. Jane of all trades. Mm-hmm. Or would it be Jill? <laughs> Jill, because she went down that hill with Jack Dumbass. We talk about a Jane of all trades. <laughs> okay. So, how do you channel it, though, like, you know, without spreading yourself too thin? Uh, is it time like, management? Is it... Uh, like, how do I manage all the yeah, different... At once. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's difficult. Like... I try my best, but um Shout out to your manager. Shout out to my manager. Yeah, let thank you for the, thank you for getting to that. Cause shout out to my man. My manager plays a really, 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 really big role. Because I was just like manager list for like a couple years before my manager. So it's like the difference is like tremendous. But um she so she handled like all my business. She handled all my business. Like I ain't gotta worry about it. no the only thing I have to worry about is being creative. <laughs> like it's just doing my creative job and you know making content and you know spitting that hot shit and stuff like that but like how do I manage all the different aspects I feel like it's like a bunch of different aspects of me so it's like different parts of me so it's like when I work on my music that's like a certain part of me like and I just dive deep into that and I just be like engulfed in that for like days at a time then I come up out of that and it's like boom now I'm back on the comedy then I get engulfed in that and it's like yeah I'll be like in a trance like when I get in my creative mode I'll be in like a whole trance so that's what's up yeah. that's what's up you have a very joyful spirit and a very joyful energy right and I just want to let you know we appreciate it uh, because we talk to many different people you know and it be, it be many different energies you know 
Uh, some be high, some be low. Yeah, you, know? you be around a lot of energies. You doing interviews and shit like that. Yeah. Like, what do you do to cleanse your energy? Like, do you cleanse your energy after you get done talking to people, or do you just carry that shit around with you when you leave? Um, I don't think people energy is like attached to me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is work. You know what I'm saying? I'm at work right now, right? Okay. So, um, it's kind of like if you work in a job, right? You do you leave work at home? Like, you I, go, I mean, like you leave work. work at work and then yeah. you go, okay, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm an empath, so it'd be hard for me to. Leave people in the way it's at. That's yeah. why I like. Yeah, you the same way? That's why I seclude myself from people a lot too, because it's like I pick up on everything. <laughs> but. but what I want to ask you, you know, from what we uh, talk to a lot of different young ladies about, um, it's like uh, BBLs, um, sex work, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Um, how were you able to? stay away from that as a young lady in this industry um i think just sticking to my guns is just tunnel vision like i um (laughs) i just think uh i got big boundaries Mm -hmm. i put the big b in boundaries so i think just sticking to my boundaries and like i said just being isolated like me choosing to be like so isolated has like saved me from so many situations. Probably done saved my life like a couple times. Like done saved me from so many like situations. But like a lot of people like they don't feel comfortable in isolation because they always feel like they missing out on something. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything in the world. If anything, not so cognitive, I feel like the world be missing out on me. So I don't really feel like it be like a need to like just always be like in the circles and with the people and just like in those type of environments where like, you know what I'm saying? Messy shit could happen or like shit that I wouldn't want to go down could go down. So I think, and I'm very protected. Like I'm spiritually protected, like heavily, like real, real, real heavily. So yeah, that play a big part too. Shout out to the ancestors always watching over me. So yeah. That's what's up. And discernment. I told you about that discernment. Discernment. I don't be with everybody. I'm very, very, very selective about who I with and like who I allow into my energy. So, yeah. That too. And I've uh, I've actually had the honor to be on tour with Katie Wilson. Um, and we we've had some great times. I can't help but to wonder where <laughs> Red at. Oh, Red. Oh yeah, you was around when. <laughs> yeah, Red. Um. I haven't talked to Red in a while. Oh, man. Yeah. That trip we took to uh, Memphis. Yeah, and I think that was my second or like third show, I think. But that was my first like out of town show. Like that was, whoo, that was a, you, I forgot about that show. He was DJ, DJ, you, you messy. (laughs) (laughs) You, I was waiting on the messiness. He's so messy. (laughs) <laughs> they don't even know what we're talking they about. They don't know what we're talking about, because I, I had forgot all about that Memphis trip. Like, you're Ooh. you're messy for that one. But, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and I remember y'all and you, you and Red had, uh, y'all had, uh, was smoking weed up in the rental car for the Airbnb. Yeah, I remember that. See, remember I told you, I wasn't even smoking back then. Like, right. imagine how chill I would have been if I was smoking. Like, I wouldn't even get Imagine high. how chill he would have been. And he smoked now too, right. right? And he got up in y'all ass about getting high and look now everybody smoked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate mm-hmm. that some shit. We wasn't doing nothing wrong. Yeah, I feel it now. I can see like me as as me being a weed head now. I looking back at that incident, I can I can I can understand why y'all was up in that car getting high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's 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 definitely a blessing to be able to talk to you now. You know, on this platform. Yeah. that I've built, you know what I'm saying? That, so and shout out dope. to you because you want to know what's crazy? I did not know you was DJ. Well, I know you DJ you, obviously. I know you was DJ you, but like I was seeing your platform because you be the nigga behind the camera. So like we rarely see you, but I was seeing those interviews and I did not know it was you. Like I didn't put two and two together really. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's up. Like when I said, I'm like, okay, DJ University. And quick question. Look, I'm the one interviewing you. Um, but I was wondering this, is your name DJ University because you used to be DJing at universities? Because that just sounds like real obvious. Yeah? That's, yeah, that's, okay. yeah. Okay, I felt yeah. a little smart. You hit it on the head. I ain't know I was that easy to figure out. Damn. <laughs> I'm very intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, yeah, 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 yeah. You can say that. You can say that for sure. Okay. But uh, what's some things you got coming up? What's some things we can look forward from Katie Wilson? Definitely the music. So I be hoarding my music because um, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. <laughs> But I can't keep hoarding it. Like, I got a mixtape of like 12, 13 songs that's just sitting there just waiting. So I'm about to drop that. <laughs> um, the movie, The County. You gotta, it's, I, we got something that we can play. <laughs> look, I ain't even look over at my manager because I just know she ready. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. <laughs> Music, movie, go ahead. <laughs> the movie, The County, coming out. Shout out to David, that's coming out next month. Um, Clothing line, finna take off with that, my fragrance, whatever. And just all type of shit. You never know what I pop out with. Like, I just get out there and just do some shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck around and start an airline company next month or some shit. Who knows? Like, I. K Airlines. <laughs> K Airlines. <laughs> I wanna do it all. Like, whatever. I'm so serious. Like, I feel like we all should be like that. Whatever you can get done in this lifetime, why not do it? That's what the fuck we come here for. To, like, see everything we can get done. You know what I'm saying? Fall in love a couple times, do a little procreate but other than that like the main basis of us being here is to like evolve and like learn and do shit so I just like <laughs> I'm a very creative person I just want to do shit I just want to do a lot <laughs> is there a message you would like to leave to the young ladies that's watching this uh yeah you could do whatever you want to do like don't let don't never let nobody tell you you can't do nothing um don't ever put no limits on yourself because I notice we do that a lot like a lot of people be like Oh, I ain't gonna let nobody tell me what I can or can't do. But whole time, you the motherfucker that's putting the limits on yourself. You the motherfucker that's like down yourself. Like you the motherfucker that's planting them negative seeds. So stop that, sis. You got this. Like you gonna be great. Like cause I wish somebody would have told me that. You know what I mean? So yeah. And the sky ain't the limit. No. It's all right. It's not. It's really like a firmament. But once you break past that bitch, you can go however how you wanna go. Yeah, cause like, cause like, if you get in an airplane and you be up in the sky, you can see that it's some. Exactly, above the sky, right? exactly. And where does the sky stop? If the sky was the limit, it would have to stop at a certain point, cause the limit has to stop. The sky don't stop. That's deep. <laughs> I never thought of it like that before. Yeah, honestly. Depending on how much time you get, if you want to get it, I feel like the sky, because I say this all the time, that the sky and is just the ocean. Like, if you go all the way down to the bottom of the ocean, you're going to end up in outer space, and you cannot tell me otherwise. No, it's like sand at the bottom of the ocean, all right? It's not no sand at the bottom of the ocean. That's what they want you to believe. No. You ain't never been to the bottom. You ain't right. never been to the bottom. We ain't never been to the top, neither. Mm. They'll tell you they've been to the top. If you ain't never been to the bottom, how the fuck you been to the top? Mm. Honestly, because it's the same stuff. And even God tell us that in the Bible. You know, the Christians love to, to quote the Bible. <laughs> the Christians love to quote the Bible as if it's like just the, the, the one book of life for facts. But I am going to quote the Bible as above, so below, right? What's at the top is what's at the bottom. That duality, you know what I'm saying? We in the middle of like the same shit that's at the top and at the bottom. And I don't feel like the astronauts be leaving this bitch. I feel like the only way you can leave this bitch is if you leave this vessel. I feel like matter can't go up that high. Like it's too, we too dense. You only like spiritually, yeah, you could, you could, you could do that shit if you ask for travel. But I don't feel like your physical body is meant to leave the earth. Your physical body wasn't born outside of the earth. Like they didn't make your physical body and then like drop that bitch down to the earth and be like okay you're gonna no you was born here you gotta die here you gotta go back into, up into the ground but yeah see we so, don't got off on the tip. no 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 so you say so you say astronauts can't leave the earth so you so you saying wherever they go they still on earth in my opinion right, yeah okay. i don't want to i don't want to offend no astronauts or nobody that's in like astronautical school or anything like that I don't want to get canceled by the astronauts, but my, my personal opinion is that, yes, I feel like a lot of what they be referring to as outer space is not technically outer space. I don't feel like it's the outer space. It's out of our atmosphere, but right, I feel like right. just because it's out of our atmosphere does not classify it as like outer space because it's like different like layers of the atmosphere and stuff, the stratosphere, the, all that shit. So 
That's where they be at, in my opinion. Even if, honestly, I feel like even if you was to take your ass to the moon, that's still not out of space. That's just me, though. Um. Okay. Now, now, as far as the moon, right? Uh -huh. We can see that at nighttime. And at daytime. The moon is the sun at daytime, right? No. I'm not saying the moon is the sun. I'm saying you see the moon at night and at day. You don't look up at the, at the sky and see the, the moon at daytime. You don't be seeing it. You've seen it before. You probably just ain't. Yeah. What you mean by like 5 p.m. ish? Like when it's becoming. I mean when it look like how I look outside. Like when it's the sun. When the sun is out and the moon out too. That's what I mean. At the same time. At the same time. You've never seen that? Y'all never seen that? He's seen it. You just probably ain't never paid attention to it. Like, cause you probably like not consciously thinking like, what the fuck is the moon doing out while the sun is out at the same time? I think, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Personally. The scientists came up with like a, a bullshit explanation as to why that happens, but it, did, it didn't make sense to me. So the scientists gonna tell you it's like some bullshit as to why the, the sun and the moon can be out at the same time. But I call it bullshit. Cause we like under a dome. You know when you see rainbows? It's the sun reflecting the light. The rainbow make that rainbow shape. It's the dome shape because it's reflecting off the dome. Mm. That's deep. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> gonna be calling me a flat earther. <laughs> Which I feel like flat earthers, they get too, they get too much like bullshit thrown at them because like the round earthers. Like to be like, oh, flat so earth. You think that you think the earth is flat? I'm not saying that it's flat nor round because I personally have like never seen it from like an angle to where I can determine. Like if you look at textbooks and Google, they gonna tell you it's round. If you listen to a flat earth, then he gonna have a three hour discussion with pinpoints as to why that bitch is flat and it's gonna make sense. It's up to you what the fuck you think. But what I think is, I'm not sure. What could it be flat? I feel like it's a possibility. Could it be round? I feel like it's a possibility, but for some reason my mind, like the physics of my mind don't correlate with the earth being like a sphere. Not round, but a sphere. My mind can't really, and I guess gravity plays like a big part into that, but I still don't really understand how it could be a sphere. It, it, it would, honestly, it would make more sense. It makes more sense to me that earth would be flat. It, that makes more sense to me, but I feel like the round earth is like, they just feel like it's just so like, so crazy to believe they just like all oh, the, the flat earth is like they just like slow to think that the but I don't feel like it's slow to think that the earth is flat I don't I don't I feel like what's slow is if you close your mind off to some shit just because Google gonna tell you that the earth is like round and you like okay that's fact I don't want to hear shit else like no type of that's what's dumb so I never close my mind my mind is always open to possibilities right that's what's up <laughs> I, I like an open-minded person, you know what I'm me saying? Me too, me too, me too. I feel like certain people, when they, like, learn certain shit or, like, a certain amount of shit, should I say, they just feel like, like, that's where you get the know-it-alls from. Like, certain people just start feeling like know-it-alls. But the problem with know-it-alls is when you feel like that you done, like, acquired so much knowledge that, like, you can't gain no more, you're going you gonna to turn your mind off. So, like... If somebody talking about a topic that you feel like you like you you skilled in, you're not gonna want to listen to what the f they got to say about that topic. But they could probably add to your knowledge, but your, because you feel like you a know it all and you like you done turned your f mad off and closed it, it's like you not like ex like accepting of that information. So I just take in knowledge from everywhere. I don't give a f if it's like a crackhead on the street. I sit and I talk with him and listen to what the f he got to say. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I ain't listen to nobody that like don't got a lot of money or like that ain't better than me, that ain't doing better than me in life. Shit, you missing out on a lot of motherfucking knowledge because that's where I get all my lot of trouble. People just think I'm so smart. Like, oh, you just so intelligent, you know so much shit because I listen to people. Like, I get information from people. Like, people be like, oh, what can he teach me? What can she teach me? A lot. It's a lot of shit that you know that you probably don't know. Like, I can sit here and get knowledge from the conversation me and you have it. Like, so, yeah. I like to learn from everybody that I interview. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like one of my gems. Um, one of the fans left a comment, asked me how come I don't do my research before I do my interviews. I said, I ask questions for a reason. Like I'm asking because I really want to know. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit and dig up a whole bunch of information and then come and ask you questions that I already know right. the answer it's like, to. Right, exactly. Why would I do that? And you know most interviews just be asking like, the same repetitive question, so I can exactly. see why you just want to like, yeah, yeah. yeah. let it so, flow. Yeah, it's definitely a blessing learning from you today. 
Miss Katie Wilson. Thank you. Um, do people ever call you Katie Hilson? Katie Hilson? No, I've never got that. That's a new one. I might have to coin that. Um, I get uh, Katie Perry, Katie Guy Benz all the time. Katie Guy Benz is like one. Do people say Katie? Like, yes. That's it? It's, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, it's a little irritating. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Katie Guy Benz. That's this. I'm going to tell you why, though. Because you know, I'm, you know, like, that's not my, I can see if he was calling, like, that Katie, Katie, but it's like, I'm not that Katie, so, like, I don't know, it's just a little irritating, because people do it so much, maybe that's why, but, yeah. So, so, do people, but people know, like yeah. you said. Yeah. But, I mean, y'all the same height. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my good sis. But 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 my name Katie for real though. Right, her name ain't even really Katie. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> like just call me Red. Just call, just call. Like you ain't do the Katie. Like that's that's <laughs> that's her shit. Like do it for her. Like. Word. No. <laughs> but yeah. Any shout outs or close remarks you want to leave the people? Um, shout out to the world. <laughs> shout out to my manager. <laughs> Shout out to your nail tech. She shout out to my yes. Shout out to my nail tech. Period. Dominique. Shout out to um, uh, what's her name? Jay Slay Unis. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm happy. <laughs> shout out to Jasmine Jay Slay Unis on the wig. Shout out to me K Collection on the body. Shout out to my mama for the body. And yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, shout out to the beer boss for the interview. You know, and um. Shout out to Roy Introduction for the camera. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Katie for sitting on the couch. And shout out to y'all for watching. Yeah, shout out to y'all, because none of this would be possible without y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Period. <laughs> you, you got one of them songs you want me to play? Let me tell you what I can't stand. It ain't the rain. These goofy niggas drive me insane. Boy, fuck your chain. Fuck the set that you claim. Fuck the hood that you bang. I'll be fresh as hell when you see me worth the two chains. I'll be cool as hell. Heavy kicking it like who came. He like what you want. I told him, top boy, give me two pain. Pussy cold as fuck. He like this sweet boy. This ain't cool, eh? Crazy!